find the centroid of the region bounded by y equals x squared over 4, y equals 4, and x equals 0. First up, let's draw the graph of the region and understand exactly what's going on with it. Let's take a look at y equals x squared over 4. It's a parabola. The division by 4 causes a compression vertically. It means it's just been pushed in instead of stretched out. So it opens wider than the normal kind of y equals x squared. All right, great. Still has a vertex at the origin, though. The others are just lines, right? Y equals 4 is a horizontal line at 4. X equals 0, more commonly known as the y-axis. Now, as it stands right now, it seems kind of strange. What region are they talking about? So we have to make some assumption here. And uh, after we go and find this intersection between the parabola and the, the line, the horizontal line, then we have to come to some agreement. So x squared over 4 must equal to 4, or that x squared is 16, and that gives it x is plus or minus 4. So we're going to come to an agreement, basically, that they're really talking about what's going on in the first quadrant. It's kind of vague by the way they have it worded, but we're going to go with that, and we're going to make sure that uh, we just ignore what's on the left-hand side. Okay, so in these formulas, we know we need an upper function and a lower function. And so what we're going to have is the upper function is going to be the line, y equals 4. That's going to be our f of x. The lower function is going to be the parabola, y equals x squared over 4, upper minus lower. Every place we see an f of x, we'll put a 4. Every place we see a g of x, we'll put x squared over 4. So now, let's go calculate the three important integrals that are in the formulas for the center of mass. The y moment, the x moment, and the mass. First up is the y moment. The moment about the y-axis. The likelihood of the system to rotate about the y-axis. We have the formula from the cheat sheet f of x is going to be replaced by 4, g of x is going to be replaced by x squared over 4, but don't forget there's an x multiplied by that, and our limits of integration will be from 0 to 4, since we decided to do only the first quadrant. Distribute the x in, so 4 times x, and x times x cubed, uh, x squared over 4 becomes 4x minus x cubed over 4, and we're integrating from 0 to 4. So we just find the antiderivative of each, power rule in reverse. We would have x squared over 2, and that 4 would become 2x squared. We'd have x to the 4th over 4, but the 4 that's already down there gives us a 16. Keep the row on the outside, and we need to evaluate from 0 to 4. Essentially, because this is polynomial, we just need to evaluate at 4. What we get is 2 times 4 squared minus 4 to the 4th over 16. Picture this as being four copies of the number four all multiplied out. Two of them will cancel with the 16. I would still have two left though. And this guy is just 16 times 2 or 32. 32 minus 16 is 16. So the moment about the y-axis is 16 rows, 16 times the density great now let's go get the moment about the x-axis <clears throat> get the formula from the cheat sheet integrate from 0 to 4 and we're gonna have f of x replaced by 4 g of x replaced by x squared over 4 in the in this formula we have to square these guys before subtracting square the 4 you get a 16 square x squared over 4 and you get x fourth over 16 to find the antiderivative here We'll just use the power rule in reverse. We get 16x, and then we get x to the fifth over 5. No need to multiply 16 times 5. Leave it as 16 times 5. It's our job to put a 4 in. So 16 times 4 is 64, and then we have 4 to the fifth. This is where it comes in handy that we never multiplied out 16 times 5. 
basically we have four copies of five, uh, five copies of four. One, two, three, four, five copies of four here. And two of them will cancel with the 16th. We would still have three of them around four cubed is 64. So that would be 64 minus 64 over 5. Please don't try to make this all over 5. Recognize these 64's and pull it outside. Factor out the 64. you will be left with 1 minus a fifth and it's so much easier to deal with that than 64 minus 64 fifths. Yes this 2 is going to turn a 64 into a 32 and inside here yes we have 4 fifths. And so the final answer then has the 32 row times the 4 fifths and 32 times 4 is 128. And so we have 128 row over 5. That is the moment about the x-axis. Finally, we need the moment, I mean the mass, I'm sorry. And the formula is density times area. This is the area. So what we're going to have is f gets replaced by 4, x squared, get, uh, g of x gets replaced by x squared over 4. Let's go right to the antiderivative. 4x. Now we're going to get x cubed over 12. We already have a 4. The 3 that comes down from the power rule is, is over 12 now times the 4. And then we plug in a 4. So we get a 16, and then we have three copies of 4 multiplied out, and that's all over 12. So this one copy of 4 can turn this 12 into a 3. These two guys that are left over give us 16. And once again, like we did in, in, in the previous calculation, please don't put these together. Let's take out the 16, and we'll be left with 1 minus a third, which is 2 thirds. If we have 16 times 2 thirds, that's 32 rho over 3. And these are the three important integrals we need. Now we just take these integrals and plug into the x bar and y bar formula. x bar is the moment about the y axis over the mass. y bar is the moment about the x axis over the mass. We have the previous calculations. To get x bar, we take 16 rho divided by 32 rho over 3. Dividing by a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal. We get cancellation. The 32 row gets canceled and turns into a 2, essentially. 16 row becomes a 1. And the answer is 3 halves for the x coordinate of the center of mass, the centroid. Moving on to y bar, we have the moment about the x axis over the mass. So we have 128 row over 5 all over 32 rho over 3 multiply by the reciprocal the rows cancel and 32 goes into 128 four times leaving you with the 4 and the 3 in the numerator which is 12 when multiplied so 12 fifths is this y coordinate to the center of mass and we're good to go Three halves and twelve fifths is the answer to the question. It is the center of mass, and I'd like for you to get a visual. So we have the original picture, uh, computer-generated version of it, and I've plotted the point one and a half and two point four, right? One point five, and this guy is called two point four. So I just kind of guesstimated as to where that would fall at, and this guy here is called the center of mass. This is the coordinates for it here. And that's where it would be plotted at.